we're on Facebook and so somebody got somebody joining us right now or there's David Ketterman good to see you my brother uh, our board member David Jacobs has jumped in here good to see you brother David uh, wasn't that long ago that he left the office um, grading papers and helping Dr. Fay with the school uh, tender hearts there good to see you and there's several others we're going to go ahead and get started tonight uh, good to see everybody joining us tonight uh, if you want to you could early on go ahead and, and uh, click like and then click share so that other people can get it you know on the beginning of this broadcast i always share to the um uh, uh, uh there's a, there's a group i just mom momentarily slipped my mind uh empowered as sons group and um uh, so uh, tonight we're going to come back to where we were a couple of weeks ago with Pastor Rich Morton, who's uh, back with me tonight. And uh, Pastor Rich, welcome back to Kingdom Dynamics. It's so good to have you on every time you're with me. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bill. I, I, again, I always appreciate it and consider it an honor to be here. And I'm uh, very happy to hear that you can uh, speak clearly and uh, I don't have to uh, take the whole show by myself. <laughs> Well, I'll do the best that I can tonight, um, but it's it's always good to uh, connect with people who uh, can eat from the same uh, well that you're uh, mm. living in, and, and uh, likewise, yeah. get to eat from the well that you eat out of. And and uh, so we've been talking about the eternal purpose, and I realize that this is a chapter uh, from your book on Christ is All. Uh, I want to just give everybody a chance to see this again, and we'll try to find a link where that can be posted, uh, where you can uh, pick that up. It's a good size book, uh, but you'll enjoy it. Uh, you won't, unless you're just a person who is an avid reader, you won't be able to read this book. You will have to study it by sections. I'm just telling you that as a studier, uh, I've always been a student of the word, and this is one of those books you just have to study. And so... Um, you can uh, uh, search that out at Ascension Life. Uh, I think it's Ascension, Ascension Life. Life Publishers. And I'll post the link at the end of the show okay. again. And so Very good. That'll be in there. Okay. And then you can pick that up if you uh, would. Uh, and so we've been talking about one of the chapters called the eternal purpose, but but really just kind of going in whatever direction Holy Spirit leads. And yes, I do have a little more of a voice tonight. Uh, that just kind of happened this afternoon. And uh, I guess because I've been <laughs> keeping quiet. Uh, but um, but we're, we're, we're going to talk about, as I've been advertising, and those of you watching uh, and others that will be coming on, uh, and those who will see this video from YouTube or on Facebook later on, uh, we've been advertising about this question, what is the beginning of creation? And a lot of people have issues with that. And then for this reason that uh, we think about the beginning of creation as Genesis chapter one, verse one. And a lot of times we'll immediately uh, move forward to Genesis one, verse 26, where it says, let us create man in our image, which the, the us and the our there is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the fullness of the Godhead. And uh, but there actually is more to it than that. And so uh, we talked about last time just a little bit. We want to kind of just pivot off of this and move into tonight's lesson. Uh, uh, Genesis 46, 10. And I, uh, if you want to reiterate that from a different translation, I've chosen the God's word translation. It says, from the beginning, I revealed the end. And I love that. Because wow, that's awesome. A, a student of the word, I... I got into Genesis 1-1, but I also found clues throughout the Bible that pointed to prior to that, which was really, John calls it in some translations, a time before time. And he says, in the beginning, I revealed the end. From long ago, I told you things that had not happened, saying, uh, had not yet happened, saying my plan will stand and I'll do everything I intended to do. Hmm. And so... In these two lessons, we've been discussing the eternal purpose from creation forward. Uh, I just ended a series on Tuesday nights with a, a, a panel where we talked about um, uh, from eternity and beyond, kind of like Buzz Lightyear from infinity and beyond uh, on Play Toy Story. But 
But, uh, but really, that's what we're talking about is from whatever eternity, because eternity has no beginning and eternity has no end. Right. Some think one day it's all going to come to this cataclysmic end and it's all going to be done. Uh, that's not the case. And we know that. And so uh, what, when we talk about uh, the beginning of time uh, and we, we see, uh, if we can see and discover uh, God's uh, end uh, concerning his eternal purpose, what's that supposed to look like, Pastor Rich? Well, uh, I love that translation you just uh, shared there. I, I, uh, my, my teaching uh, Bible is New King James, so I use that a lot for just uh, right. my, my off the teaching. And then, I, of course, I'd love to add other translations to that, both as commentaries and as interpretations. But, but you know, that, that statement, declaring the end from the beginning, is so important to me. I think it's, it's paramount. It's a foundation of the chapter we're talking about, even though I call it eternal purpose. It's the, cha- it's the foundation that interweaves through all of it. Another scripture that I really like to use and, and will launch from as well is in Isaiah 2, 14, 24, where, where the, uh, the Lord of hosts have sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so it shall come to pass, and as I have purposed, so it shall stand. And, and there's other, a lot of other scriptures that kind of allude to this as well. So I have to ask myself, if God is declaring the end yeah. from the beginning, all right, that's what it says. I mean, that, that, that's pretty straightforward, and, and you can find this thought otherwhere. And, and he, in a lot of places in Isaiah, especially, he talks about as he has thought, so it shall come. So I have to ask, what has God thought? What has yes. God purposed? And when did God think it? And when did he purpose it? And Because in omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence, if God has a thought and a purpose, he would it would have to be... Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's a beginning to that. So when is that beginning? Well, the, to to that omnipresence and all that, the beginning and the end would be simultaneous because he, he can, can encompass all that in his understanding. And that kind of is difficult for us sometimes in our finite understandings and our linear way of thinking. But, uh, you know, God is thinking things in a in a completed, perfect fashion, not necessarily uh, thinking and, and purposing things from like we would build a model. You start with this little piece and, you know, right. and you do that. You know, he's, he's got the whole picture uh, completed and purposed in his understanding. And so I really do, if, if we can go ahead then and get into Genesis chapter 1, and, 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 but you can feel free to jump back into those any scriptures. You know, when we look at this, so what are we looking at in Genesis chapter 1? For me, this is a picture of the end. Now, God is a spirit. We know that God is spirit, not a spirit, but God is spirit. And the father is spirit. So if God creates something, he creates it out of himself and therefore it right. is spiritual. So God has a spiritual creation that he's picturing to us here. This is as this is what God thought. This is what God purposes. This is his plan laid out for us in Genesis chapter one. And so when we read this, if we can read it from that standpoint, that God is thinking something here, he's purposing something. And then he declares everything I've purposed, everything I've thought I'm going to perform. I'm going to perfect. I'm going to do it. Who's going to stop it? Nobody can stop it. You know, there's a lot of statements like that. We went over a few of those last time. And so this is God's purpose. So in a way, this is God's eternal purpose. And Right. I'll just drop this bombshell in here real quick, too. So what happens, a lot of people, and I did for many years until this revelation really unfolded in me, is we we read Genesis chapter 1, and then we go into Genesis chapter 2, and we think it's the telling of just the same story and progression of creation. But I don't see that like that. I see Genesis chapter 1 as what God has thought, what he's purposed. And I see Genesis chapter 2 as a beginning of a material unfolding of some things from our concept of uh, life and, and, and existence. So, and really uh, Genesis uh, chapter one doesn't really end until Genesis chapter two, verse three, when uh, God blessed the seventh day and rested, you know, that really to ever put that chapter two starting when it did, I think you made a big, huge mistake. But uh, for me, chapter two doesn't even start until verse four, where all of a sudden we see a whole different concept of creation. In fact, there's a different concept of God. We went from God, the Elohim, to the Lord God. You know, if you look those words up, you'll see they're completely different descriptions of God. And so something radically changed. And what radically changed is you went from God's eternal purpose being declared, which is perfect and, and secure in every way. Right. And now you see this creation of materiality 
in earthboundness where now a man uh, changes everything. And because he decided to live in disobedience, everything is doomed. And the, the half of the world, more than half the world is going to spend eternity in a burning hellfire because of this right. one man's decision. You know, so what happened to God's purpose and plan? Well, this guy just messed it all up. You know, he ruined it. And so that's a really makes God look weak to me. I mean, if you if, if you've got right. this incredibly internal God who, who has his purpose and plan and then his first creation man that he makes decides that well you know what? i'm going to eat of that apple anyway and uh you know i'm just going to do what i want to do right so he does this well shoot man now everybody's doomed to hellfire unless you get involved in plan b which is you know i'll send my son down now to save some of you because that's what people right. take that's the teaching is i'm going to send jesus to earth and he's going to save some of you but most of you aren't going to believe in him in fact there's all kinds of people that have lived on this planet that have never even heard of him you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and and people that have died young or people that just were super whatever, just different religions, uh, indigenous tribes. There's just all kinds of people that have existed that you can think of if you get to really thinking about it that that. Well, they're just doomed because they didn't get a part of Plan B. So there, there's something different. Yeah, so I say all that to say there's a distinction between Genesis chapter one and Genesis chapter two. And so the distinction for me is Genesis chapter one. Uh, is is God's uh, eternal purpose in His thinking, and the way He's pur- what He's purposed to do, what He's thought to do, and if you look at the just the first, actually the the first five words of Genesis uh, chapter one, or you could almost teach the whole Bible in those first five words. But even in the first three words, in the beginning, I have to stop because to me that's the key that unlocks everything. And that word beginning is what I'd like to talk about uh, tonight for sure. It, it, because I think that is so important to say, well, what is the beginning? Because if you have this realm of eternity, you know, how do you have a beginning? How do you have a point that you say this is the beginning? So because the beginning uh, always references to us a timeline. So what is that? Is that where God started a timeline? Nor, go ahead. Let me let me interject something here that will, I think, help clarify for us, because you're right. People have really believed there was a beginning. And then at some point in time, we manifested in the earth as human beings. And then one day, God lovingly, who loves all these beings he created, some are just going to die and burn in hell because they didn't really know him. And we've had all this false doctrine. We've had the misconceptions about the book of Revelation. But you know, for years, it has been believed that the eye blinks at the rate of 1 40th uh, of a second. Now, even quicker than that, in a uh, in whatever the other number is, if you call it 100th of a 100th or 99 of 100, that's how quick the end and the beginning took place. Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> God doesn't see time uh, the way we do. And so the whole point of what we do is trying to get people to think like God as best as we understand God. Yeah. Now, some years ago, somebody uh, loaned me a book and in it, there was the first eight verses of Genesis chapter one uh, translated from a literal Hebrew translation. Now, it was years I've used this, years. It's written down in one of my Bibles, but only recently did I find the Robert B. Thyme translation, and this, this exact same words, and this is what Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, which was not a beginning, in eternity past, Elohim, the Son, created out of nothing the entire universe, including planet Earth. And I have, I have had that. I'm so glad I found it because I've got to get that translation. Um, but... The, the thing about it is, is this planet Earth that we've got to understand is really a people. And I love the way the Hebrew distinguishes the planet Earth because it really refers to a people. And the way you make that fit with verse one and verse two is verse two is not a description of God's flub up that the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. That's why like God created perfection. Then all of a sudden there's this flub up. Then we go to all kinds of theological uh, research to try to prove why that flub up took place. 
But in reality, there never was a flub up. That was just the, a description of the process of God making man and God filling him with his intellect by verse three. But you're right. In a beginning, which was not a beginning, Elohim created out of nothing the entire universe. That's so amazing that this beginning that we call a beginning wasn't even a beginning. It was just eternity past, and we're still living in that moment, but we're coming into a full realization of really who God is and what God has done. So I, I just, I know I'm not going to be able to keep quiet tonight. <laughs> okay. It, well, I don't it, want it, you to. It, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I love it. So, you know, and so if, if people ask me, well, how could you possibly say these things? And, and you, you don't believe this is, is physical, but, but see, the thing is, I believe Genesis chapter one is a spiritual picture of an eternal truth. Okay. It's, it's a spiritual picture of eternal truth. When Genesis chapter one, two would be more to me, a picture of more of a, a physical representation of our understanding of things. And so, you know, to me, this, what this is, you, you have to interpret from, I have to interpret uh, Genesis chapter one spiritually, or some people would say allegorically or esoterically, or, you know, there's different ways you can say that. But to me, it is a spiritual picture and it's a spiritual understanding. And it, it's not physical that I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a physical interpretation because if God declares the end from the beginning, then he also declares the beginning from the end. And so Revelation 21 and 22 are the same things. I mean, you can take Genesis chapter one and lay it right on top of Revelation 21, 22. And it's, it says the exact same thing in a different way. They're both spiritual pictures are both signs and symbols that have been given to us. And we have to, we have to be caught up into the spirit. In other words, we have to have our awareness raised to a spiritual <laughs> understanding because the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. So in other words, if we, use natural interpretation for this, which so many people have done, uh, then I think we miss it because there's, there's other people that will come along and debate you and they'll probably bury you uh, in their debating skills uh, of, of this not being literal. And it's very well, is could be, right? It could not be literal because to me it's spiritual. It exists. And people say, well, how could that be? Well, how can you have a body eternal in the heavens? You have a body not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The, the word the Paul t teaches us that, right? It's the same way because that's your true reality is you exist eternally in the heavens. You exist perfect and complete in the heavenly realm, in that atmosphere of spiritual perfection. That's who right. you truly are. And so any other you that's appearing is a concept, a false concept of who you truly are. And so any other creation then that's appearing, no matter what it is, whether it's a you or it's this planet, if it's appearing other than what God has purposed and declared is a false representation of that which is true. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, I think it's amazing looking at just the wording of scriptures. And you know what Paul said? He says, for we know that if, and I love the word if, because oftentimes in my teachings, even in college, I will capitalize IF because I want people to understand there's an if there. And Paul says, we know that if our earthly house right. is, you know, what is destroyed. So what I believe is that if I can stay on this planet in a physical uh, manifestation long enough, the, the, the cells of my body are literally metamorphosing in right. The, the resurrected body of the eternal Christ. Uh, I believe that's why he came to show us that picture, that there is something more than just the natural and the supernatural. And one of the things about the, the Jewish, the, the Hebrew concept <laughs> of God in the beginning creating the heavens and the earth is the heavens and earth in the, in the Hebrew concept was a, a figure of speech for universe. And what I learned from that was is that God doesn't see two realms. He only sees one. Now, I, I believe that I have a natural mind. Uh, that's my unrenewed soul, which is being renewed day by day. The problem is, is that God doesn't see us as spirit, soul, and body, even though he distinguishes those. The writings in the Bible distinguishes Father, Son, Holy Spirit, earth, heaven, and so on. But God only sees one. And so as we learn to operate out of one mind, mm. one realm, uh, one concept, which is his mind, then mm. we begin to operate in this earthly realm, not from the natural mind, but from the spiritual mind. And you're right, 
uh, Pastor Rich, you'll look at Genesis 1 and you'll lay it over to Revelation 21 and 22 and you will see uh, the end from the beginning that God said, look, everything in the middle was just man's idea of what a fall was like and, and ha all the efforts to get back on track. But look, we can give people hope because you know what? Everything's okay. God, in a, and I love what David Ketterman said uh, tonight. He said, so it was eternity that has passed. Hmm. Eternity is what's passed. We're here and we can enjoy God for all eternity. Don't think of a natural realm and a, and a, and a spiritual realm. It's just one realm. Just enjoy the Father. Yes, and, and that's awesome. And so if we look at that word beginning, uh, you yeah. know, if you look in Strong's or any of your other reference materials, you'll see that, you know, it's very limited in its of its uh, definition. It just, they just say it means origin or source. So it has nothing right. to do necessarily with timeline. It's just origin or source. So then you have to ask, say, so what is our origin? What is our source? So start looking at beginning. And, and I'm going to just rattle off some scripture here for beginning so we can paint a picture then of what maybe this is pointing us to. You know, this is a key. Uh, we, we talked about uh, the Proverbs about how it's a glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. So we're going to try to do a little king searching out here tonight. And, uh, and in uh, Revelation 3, we see our first clue, verse 14, where it says, The amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So right there, we, we have our first clue, the beginning of the creation of God. And I'm going to have you comment here in a second on this, all these Revelation scriptures I'm going to quote, because uh, I think you got a, a very important part to play there. So Revelation then 22, or, or, or actually we should have went started Revelation 1, 8 first, where he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end is this who is and who was and who is to come the almighty you know so here we see this again a person being referenced the beginning again we see it twice in revelation 1 and revelation 3 then in revelation 21 we see i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end again as well stick quoted and stated and then in Revelation 22, 13, the same thing, I am the, the beginning and the end. All these refer to a somebody, so to speak. You know, there's this referencing right. uh, not a timeline, but an intellect, or let's say, or a consciousness or something. So who is this person that we're looking at? And I'm going to ask you that here in just a second. I'm going to quote a few more. So in Colossians 1, 18, we see another uh, clue where it said, who is the beginning? Who? A whom? The who is the beginning? There's a who that uh, and in Romans 11, uh, 36, uh, we, we, we see about of him, through him uh, and to him are all things. We it's pointing again to this who uh, Colossians 1, 16, all things were created through him and for him. Right. 17, he is before all things in him. All things exist. Who, who, so who, who we're starting to see this, all things in uh, John 1, 3, all things were made. He, in him, all things were made. In the beginning, John 1, again, we see that same picture in the beginning, the word. We see the word in the beginning, God in the beginning, the word. And this beginning is the same beginning. So the word is the beginning. In Christ is the beginning. And he's also in Christ is the end. Christ being the living word. And uh, so to me, a, a in, to, the phrase even in Paul's teaching of in Christ denotes origin and source, the same as the word beginning does. And so to say in the beginning is to say in Christ. To say in Christ is to say in the beginning because the beginning is, uh, to me, the person of the eternal Christ. So if you could kind of share some of your uh, wisdom on that. You, you know, uh, several years ago, I taught in a different college, and I taught the book of Joshua. And everything in the book of Joshua, I saw the revelation of the finished work. Now, that's the problem people have is they, they can't see beyond their own knowing or what they think they know by what they've been taught. When I got to the book of Revelation, I saw the revelation of Jesus Christ. I, I got a revelation that the whole book was about Jesus. Now, here's the thing. When you see the phrase in Christ, if all you do is look at in Christ, and you can pull out every verse of scripture that says in Christ, but you have to learn to expand. One of the first things that happened to me was Genesis 3, uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. But I began to get a revelation that God so loved the whole world. So I started reading world always as whole world. Everything I read. Now, when I read Christ, especially the in Christ, I read 
in the eternal Christ because it immediately points me back to the beginning and the end where he declared the end from the beginning and I see the eternal Christ. And it's so beautiful to know that the eternal Christ was involved, just like the Hebrew scripture I read that said in the beginning, which was not a beginning, Elohim, the son, the eternal Christ, created out of nothing the entire universe. And so the book of Revelation is really about Christ being unveiled in us. Mm -hmm. and, and what does that mean? Because does it mean that Christ was never there? No, it's always been there. Always been. That my awareness. Has, and you know what? Here's something amazing. My fifth week next week for uh, pneumatology, I'll be teaching. I'm still Holy Spirit. But I'll be teaching on Holy Spirit involved in Revelation and how Revelation <clears throat> unfolds and how that takes place. And so that's what happens. You know yourself when you're willing to go outside the box of what you've been taught and you're willing to consider the possibilities. You know, they say don't use your imagination. Your natural imagination will get you in trouble. We also have a supernatural imagination. And we can take that supernatural imagination and see the word and see Christ and see revelation outside the box. Because I want to tell you, uh, with, with the doctrines that I have and the schooling behind me, the people that has been involved in my life, they always want you to stay inside this little box and never get outside of it. I want to tell you, Christ is there. The eternal Christ is in the box. But there's such a vast amount of to experience outside the box. And so this eternal Christ is so important in this lesson. If you're going to understand the eternal purpose, I think in your book especially, you, you, you hit it first with understanding in Christ. Uh, uh, you know, Christ is all. And if all you see again is the th Jesus of 33 and a half years, you're going to miss the whole point. You've right. got to see from cover to cover, but you also have to see from before the cover this way and before the cover this right. way. Right. You have to see on the, the opposite ends of the uh, the bookends, you know. So you have the eternal Christ at one bookend, and you have eternal Christ the other bookend, and then we're the story in between, you know, the, the books <laughs> oh, in between. Right. You know, that, that's that's what we're living. We're living those stories out. We're living those books out. But, man, you got the eternal Christ on each end. And, and the eternal Christ also encompasses the personal work of Christ because that's how it was displayed to us. It was given to us, you know, in him, in his ministry when he came to earth and did all the things he did from his teaching to the death, burial, and resurrection. That's all speaking of the eternal Christ. So, so what I have what I'm doing now then with all of that that's being said. So when I say, when I read the, yeah. open it up, I say in the, in right. Christ, God created the heavens and the earth. See, I can say Come that on. because of, of all these descriptions of the beginning being the eternal Christ. So in Christ, God created the heavens and the earth. So if that's, if we can establish that, if we can establish that in Christ, God created right. everything that can possibly be created, then we might have a little confidence that, that, that God's creation is absolute over everything else that would oppose that. And that's who we are. Yeah. So that would include then our identity because in, when we get to verse 26, we see the description of God's desire, that purpose to create man in his image likeness with dominion right and then to for that to be propagated throughout all the known uh, creation and so that to me is the eternal purpose of god it's christ christ is the eternal purpose of god because that is the beginning and that then is manifested in manifold ways and we are a part of that we are that it's it's we are one with that it's one with us there's no lesser or higher or anything like that it's just god's right. eternal purpose and then god's eternal purpose is just unfolded and manifested and revealed and expands just like the universe they say is expanding at the speed of light well, that's exactly right. It's at the speed of light. Uh, and we're expanding right. at the speed of light into what is that we're expanding into? Well, we're expanding into our true identity. We're expanding into what God has thought, what God has purposed, and nothing will thwart that uh, plan and purpose. But we do awaken, unfold, grow up into, and there's so many illustrations we can use and speak of to right. that, what's happening then with us and, and to us and for us. But, you know, everything is in Christ. Everything was created in him, for him, to him. And, and you know, so that's the eternal purpose in a nutshell. It truly is the Christ in all its aspects. And then, man, we just have to understand it in whatever little category we might get a hold of that, because each time we 
get a glimpse and an understanding each time a little light is turned on or, or an awareness is raised that's a growth process for us we oh man we exactly. grow up into something there right exactly. and we can let go of something that's not because not only do we for me i i truly believe that we have to see who we are but we also have to see who we are not and so that's yeah. why i think we give given a lot of pictures and that's why we're, we're told about this adam character so that not so we can believe in adam is our identity yeah. but that we can believe that no that's not who we are that is not who we are god never that is not the man and i'll say this this might really upset some feathers but genesis 126 man in god's image and likeness that is not adam right okay that's not adam adam's created in genesis chapter two a whole different type of in fact it says he, he's, he's a whole it's a whole different description of the creation of man. And so this man is the perfect man. And, and again, it's the image of God, man, the, the image of the invisible God as Colossians 1 15 says the firstborn of all, all creation. Again, the express image in Hebrews one, three, the exact representation, exact expression, exact imprint. What uh, Hebrews one talks about uh, Romans eight talks about <clears throat> that. There's a predestination in this, a predetermined to be what conformed to the image of his son, which is Genesis 1, 26. It's not just about the 33-year-old Jesus. First Timothy no. 1 talks about the, the, the eternal king, immortal, right. invisible, only God. See, and we got to see that, that the truth of God was, is invisible to the natural material man. You know, that's why he said no man has seen God at any time. But we can see and understand and know him in his Christ. But yet, at the same time, it, it, we were told that... Uh, uh, Moses endured as seeing him who was invisible. And so Moses even had a glimpse of the invisible, true uh, purpose and will of God. And in seeing that, it saw him who was invisible to the natural materialist. And so that's what we have to see. In materialism, we're not going to see this uh, as I'm talking about. But in the reality of spirit, which is timeless and eternal, then we're going to see this. Because this creation of Genesis chapter 1 never went anywhere. If this, if God says this is this, this is my plan and purpose in the beginning in this Christ in this eternal Christ, then that is still true today as it was in any day. Yeah. And yeah. if people talk, I like to talk about the now, just like everybody else. And I'm telling you, Genesis chapter one is the now. That's the yeah. now. That's the perfection of yeah. everything God is thinking. What has God thought? We're told to ask. What What has He thought? Well, this is what He thought. And you know what? He's still thinking this today. This is still true to God today. And we've got to see and raise our awareness to where it's true to us today. So everything's perfect. God's at rest. You know, it, it's, it's us, the ones in our, in our materialist mindsets that aren't at rest and are not uh, able to cope with some of these things. So that's the, uh, phew, the whole thing in a nutshell right there for you. <laughs> you know, uh, when, when I fell into this uh, course uh, the theology of creation. Um, what I uh, I really wasn't sure the approach, except to go to Genesis one because I wrote the course and I've I've got the book that I hope can be um, uh, published uh, as soon as possible. And um, uh, what I discovered was, and this is just my take on it, is that Genesis chapter one is not creation but the explanation. There you of go. So yeah. when I, because because there wasn't enough information for me, and so I thought, well, if this has to be something else. Now, of course, this is where I begin to find clues throughout the Bible that kept pointing to a time before time, and in doing that, that's why I use the this translation that says uh, uh, in the in a beginning, which was not a beginning, because we keep seeing through these uh, these. Um, uh, um, covers on our eyes like the horse so that we can't see to the left or the right and we we think there's not more than before genesis 1 1 but the fact is, is that god when I, I just imagine it this way that before time was time god created the heavens and the earth but at some point in time he decided to to reveal that to somebody and it got wrote down in a book where Genesis 1 1 uh, began to take place. Now, I recently uh, uh, discovered, uh, well, I didn't, I didn't recently discover this, but I recently confirmed it once again that it's highly possible in theology that Genesis was not the first book written. Right. But Job was the first book written. Now I've and heard that course, before, yeah. 
Yeah, and if you see that whole scenario there, you know, you don't have Satan coming before the sons of, of, of God. You have Adam coming before the sons of God. And you have that whole relationship hang-up issue that I would say really fits with Genesis ch uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3, not really Genesis chapter 1. So this is, you know, I, I, I've been accused of being a, a, the, a theologian. I, I would just say it this way. That chapter one is its whole uh, its whole thing, and like you whole said, thing. first one of chapter two belongs over there. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen that in, in in the canonization of scripture that there's things that just seem out of place. And as much right as they had to put things in the place that they decided to, yeah, I have as much right. To <laughs> where I see them. Yeah, yeah. And so we have this explanation. But what a beautiful picture that's painted for us of how God creates this this scenario all out of love. And I think you can take John 3, 16, and you could slap it over to Genesis chapter one and say, God so loved the whole world. Yeah. That he, made. he, he, and in pre-creation, we manifested. We were spirit beings with a full knowledge, a full awareness of his mind until we manifest in this earth realm. And I kind of look at time travel and I think in time travel, I've seen so many sci-fi movies where they kind of lost something in the process. We lost our, our mind. We, we, and, and Jesus comes to restore our mind. And he shows us how. And then Holy Spirit jumps into the scene and he causes our mind to be aware. And so this is why, you know, you're, I, I so support this book because we're seeing the end from the beginning. And if we see the end from the beginning, then we're also seeing the beginning from the end. Right. And it might've got messed up in Genesis two to, Gen to, to Revelation 20. But the good news is everything gets back on track. It's, it's everything so gets on, on track and all, all the chapters <laughs> in between there just represent our concepts and understandings of where oh, we're yeah. at in life. That's in every person. See every, See, there's nothing in here by mistake. So if you study, you all have to do word studies. That's been the thing I've yeah. really enjoyed doing is, is word studies. And it, you can look at people's names. You can look at colors. You can look at numbers. You oh, can yeah. look at, you know, metals. It doesn't matter what you look at. If you want to look at those and do a, a, get into a study on that and really just follow where it takes you. And everything is awesome. And you can begin to see things uh, from from that spiritual perspective. And you see how you can see, you know, what that reminds me of who what I used to act like or something like that, those, that concept, that right, state right. of consciousness, and you, you see those things. And so, you know, we're, we're that, you know, there's this, there's this parenthesis in eternity from Genesis two to revelation 20. You like, like you say that there's is a timeline, but you know, beyond yeah. that timeline is the eternal reality, which isn't, uh, Oh is goodness. is incorporeal, you know, and it's, it's it's you can't even fit it in a timeline, and it's the timeline yeah. is just minuscule compared to the reality of spirit and eternity. And uh, I'm going to quote this scripture here in, in John, where he talks about it in the beginning as well. And in verse three, yes. he says, "All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made." Okay, so you have if if you're a student, you have to you have to say, okay. If everything right. was made through him, this eternal word, and, and without him, nothing was made that was made, then what are all these things we look at and we see every day, death and destruction and man's, what, what are these things? What is sickness and disease? What are these things appearing to our perception if everything was made in him and there's nothing yeah. that was made that was made? So, well, then that some people teach that, well, yeah, God made sickness or God made this, even though it's totally opposed to his character and his and his the 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 uh, the God that Jesus showed us and told us about. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. None of those things are made. So there, there's something different there. There's something there. So all those have to be a concept of human perception of some sort rather than a reality of spirit. And that's why people can be healed. And that's why you can step right out. Uh, whatever it is that's holding us in bondage, if we have the revelation and the and the realization, because healing is is a spiritual healing. Let's put it that way, because there are all different kinds of healings. There really is. But I've studied a lot about that. But spiritual healing is where you just step right out of that concept and just and it just yeah. falls. And that's what Jesus did. He he restored people to their true identity. He didn't take yeah. a band aid and put on people. He didn't fix things. You don't fix Adam. 
All right. You don't heal at him. You don't fix him. That's what uh, you can do with health and nutrition and doctors work on that and all that kind of stuff. But when you get healed spiritually, that means you're stepping out of that whole concept of sin, sickness, or, or, or whatever it is that's affecting you and bothering you. You're just stepping right out of that into your, to a higher reality, right. a higher state of consciousness. And so that's why all things were made through him. And so that's what, for me, when I say, I, I posted a thing on, on uh, Christ is all uh, this week where it said, uh, Christ within sees Christ within. Mm. And so that's what happens. So Christ, so when Christ within me sees Christ within you, yeah. then miracles begin to happen. I put that down in the comments. So that's what Christ sees. Christ sees Christ. And that's what Jesus was doing. He was seeing the true eternal purpose and reality of God in people. And that's why he could say to the woman and said, get up. Aren't you going to condemn me for all the bad things? No, just get up, man. I, I'm not going to condemn right. you. I'm not throwing a stone at you. And guess what? Nobody is either. Because I know who you truly are and who you always have been because nothing was made that wasn't made in this eternal Christ, yeah. in this eternal word. And, and all that, again, points to God's purpose and God's will. And, uh, man, there is such confidence in that. And so, yeah, sometimes it's a struggle. But, you know, the, and the struggle seems real, but it's from God's up here going, just come on up higher. Just come up higher. And to me, that's yeah. what being caught up is all about. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the, the truth is, is that it, with every manifestation of healing, whether you're looking at the woman caught in adultery, you're looking at the lame man that got up off the bed or the blind man, that's literally bringing them back in their spiritual identity more yeah. and more. And Jesus did that by trying to get people not to focus on on the, the senses, the sense realm. Yeah. And, and that's what we do a lot of times. We focus on the sense realm. Um but you know, you know, think about this. You were talking earlier about about the speed of, of light. Um, when you think about every time, like for example, right now I'm operating on I think about 225 megabits per second. And when you speak and I watch your mouth move, I'm seeing you in real time. Uh, if there's if it's not real time, it's from from. Uh, um, uh, from um, Arkansas to Missouri, then it's just such a slight shade that I actually can't see the difference. Um, so when I speak instantly, you hear me. Yeah. Uh, when God speaks, but think about about even the speed of 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 sound or the speed of of, of light, but with with thoughts. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, this is from the Amplified Bible. For who has known the mind and purposes of the Lord as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ, to be guided by his thoughts and purposes. So think about this. We have his thoughts in us. We have his purposes in us. We have everything that is of him. So when you're, when you're speaking uh, of Christ, from Christ, you're seeing a whole other perspective. You're now saying, I choose to operate in a higher plane. Uh, it, some people, uh, and you might talk with some ministers, Pastor Rich, that would say that's fantasy. Uh, that's not real. Uh, people would say, I'm just a, I'm just a realist. You know, let's just keep it real. Oh, I used to you say know, that. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't get any more real than thinking like God and talking yeah, like God. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's it. And, and uh, this takes me to what the whole, you know, we're, we're talking about the eternal purpose out of the book I wrote, although we can talk about it separate from the book. But, you know, sure. the whole book, every chapter is themed on, you know, Colossians uh, 311, but Colossians 3. So this helps us to see this because if we're seeing in the beginning in Christ, God created the heavens and the earth. And you, I can also show you that the heaven and the earth speak of the visible and invisible. So in Christ, in this yeah. word, God created the invisible realm of existence and the visible realm of existence, but everything in him, no matter. So that way yeah. everything's encompassed. You can't escape. There's not some little bit that got away or whatever. But uh, so then you see where, where Paul admonition is, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above 
Well, yeah. what, is, what is above? Well, it's the realm of reality. It's not talking about looking for an Elizabethan chair and this throne room like in the Olympian gods. You know, we're seeking right. Zeus up here. It's not talking about any of that. You know, and that's how it's been portrayed that we're to seek this, this heavenly realm from that aspect. We're, we're seeking the above realm actually is within us. So uh, uh, seek the thing where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. In other words, just this full authority and perfection the right hand just talks about it's just talking about a a position of of authority of of uh, over everything yeah. that is uh set your mind this is always important set your mind on things above not on things of the earth it's things above right. things that are true in christ see this is being spiritually minded is setting your mind on things above in other words in this invisible realm of spirit in this invisible realm of reality of in christ reality that we're talking about that's what we set our minds on but we've been conditioned right. to set our minds on the external world what we can see what we can the five physical senses have duped us into saying that that is reality and according to spirit and that's what I'm speaking. According to the word, according to the spirit, that is not yeah. reality because everything was created in him, through him and for him. And there's nothing that exists that does not exist in him. And so exactly. that is a spiritual creation for you died. Your life is hid with Christ and God. We know when Christ is who our life appears is manifested. We also appear manifested with him in that glorious state. And then when he jumps down to verse 10, uh, and we tell us to put on this new self who is renewed in knowledge. That knowledge, that word knowledge is, is I love to teach on the words that Paul used for knowledge. He used two of them. He used gnosis and epinosis very distinctly in his teaching. And that's a great word study. If you want to follow a cool rabbit trail, look at those two words and follow them, how he used them. But epinosis is that full, complete, above knowledge of God. So we're renewed yeah. in that full knowledge, not just in a knowledge that we can get every day or different things, but there's a complete, yes. full, above knowledge of God that we're renewing our minds to according to what? The image of him who created them, according to this in Christ beginning, this, this, this uh, person and work of Christ in the, from the beginning, where there is neither Greek nor Jew. In other words, there's no more physical uh, differences. You don't you quit seeing the physical, circumcised or uncircumcised. There's none of that. The, the barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free. You, you quit seeing all the material realm as the ultimate reality, and you realize that this is a false sense of reality, and I now need to see the ultimate reality, which he states here, which Christ is all and in all. See, how could you possibly understand that, that Christ is all and in all if you don't see Christ at both the beginning yeah. and the end as the allness of everything that God has created. And that's why this is true because Christ is all and in all, and you can see it from yeah. Genesis to revelation. I'm not making this up. Uh, you, if you do some deep studying of, of these uh, saints of old, there's people that have taught this all the way back into the early centuries where they talk about the, the two Genesis stories of Genesis. So it's not a new thing. We're just, rediscovering uh, with some other people that have alluded to it in times past. But uh, so it's been seen. So, you know, I believe without a doubt that Christ is all and in all. And what I'm doing is I'm learning to see that as reality, you know, and, right. and every day. Yeah, there's days I get up and the earth realm slap me in the face. I have to deal with it every day. My job is tough, stress. You got this, you know, all those things. But you know what? At the end of the day, if you take the time to sit down in the quiet and go into the closet and shut the door, shut the door to the world, right? And there, and there, talk to God. And then, words, you have your your meditation and your intimate moment of prayer. Right. That's where you realize that, man. You know what? God is God, and there is no other God. There is only one God, and that God is all. And uh, that God is manifested to us as the yeah. Christ and Christ is all in and all. And we're learning that we're renewing our minds to that. We're being changed. We're being transformed into that very image that God declared in Genesis 1 26, which is our true identity in him, in the spiritual creation of God. Woo. I love it. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I loved you used um, uh, John 1, 3 earlier, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And, and a, a counterpart to that is Colossians 1, 20, uh, 16 and 17, that says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible yeah. and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, and so on. And yeah. But he ends with verse 17 saying, And he is before all things. That's it. Yep. In him all things consist. Yep. Now, 
when we talk about uh, that all things exist, uh, John 1.3, uh, to exist, we know uh, we, we've got a pretty good handle on that word. But when he says that all things consist, um, they're made up of the place they existed in. So <laughs> in other words, everything comes out of Christ. So uh, think about this. Everything that is me came out of Christ. Everything that I see around me, the house I live in, the car I drive, everything came out of Christ. Uh, whether it was manifested out of knowledge, like technology, for example, came out of Christ. Uh, I know we put names on our books and we put names on our inventions, but we also know that they came out of Christ. And if it was not for the eternal Christ, uh, we would have no existence. I, I love uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 3.15 in the God's Word translation. Whatever has happened in the past is present now. Whatever is going to happen in the future has already happened in the past. And God will call the past to account. And God's just saying that, uh, that, that the, he, what he's doing by saying he will call, if you really study that out, he will call the past to account. He's really saying that, that the, the end doesn't catch up with the beginning and the beginning doesn't catch up with the end because, as you said so wonderfully, that it's all one moment in time. So awesome. So awesome, yeah. And since you went to that Colossians, I, I'm just looking at that. That's, that's yeah. just such an important passage of Scripture in Colossians uh, 1, where, and I'm just going to say this, I don't know where we're at on time, but he is the image of the invisible God. We're talking about this eternal Christ, this eternal word is the image. See, this yes. is, when God said, let us make man in our image, this is exactly what God is talking about. He's not talking about Adam, flesh and blood. He's not talking about a man of flesh and blood. No. He's not talking about a man who he breathed his in, life into his nostrils. He's not talking about that. In fact, Isaiah 2.22 Two says, what is man whose breath is in his nostrils? He said, consider your, uh, uh, or cut yourself off from man whose breath is in his nostrils. That's what Isaiah 2, 22. Cease ye from that man. Cut yourself off because that, you know why? Because that's not who you are. That is a whole different concept. Yeah. That's why Isaiah 2, 22 says that. Look that up, people. But he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, and some translations say in him, all things, all things were yeah. created. Uh, yeah. that are in heaven and that are on earth that to me that and then he says visible and invisible that's where i get the definition of heaven and earth being the invisible and visible realms whether thrones right. dominions principalities powers all things were created through him and for him he mm -hmm. is and he is before again all things and in him all things consist like you just said and he is the head of the body the church which is us the low church Hello, church. You guys are you guys know you you are the church, not a building. I, I'm sure everyone knows that, right? But uh, who is the beginning? Here he is. Who is the beginning? This firstborn of our creation is the very beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things, again, he may have preeminence. And 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 because of this type of passage and what Paul's explaining, and, and you study his Pauline revelation, you know that's yeah. why you can understand chapter two, uh, verse nine, where he says, "For in him." In this Christ, in this eternal Christ, in God's purpose and will and his plan uh, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. Uh, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. See, we're not complete yeah. in this Adamic mindset. That's where we see separation and death and sin and all these things and all the problems of the world. Say that's incompleteness in that mindset. But see, that's not who we are. If Paul is trying to take us out of that understanding and take us into an understanding of our eternal purpose, of our eternal identity, and says, look, you're complete in him. And guess what? Yeah, we always have been. But we have to go through this unfolding and this everything that happens. There's so many ways we can say it. There's, there's a lot of different ways. But I guarantee you, today, more than ever, uh, there's a revelation of Christ uh, unfolding to us, unveiling to us from within us that is taking it out of our mortal concepts. That's where to put off our mortality, right. we put our immortality. We, we talked about a show or two ago. You know, and those are the, that is happening to us. That's happening to us in time. But out of time, man, that's not happening to us. It already is an established fact in God's eternal purpose. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things I think people struggle with when we talk about the eternal Christ is 
it becomes so eternal Christ that sometimes they think we're pushing uh, a non-Trinitarian view of the Bible. And that's not the case because I'll tell you how, how people will see this, even if they don't realize it in their unconscious mind, they will literally see when you talk about who is God, they'll think of Jesus, the earthly picture, but they'll think of a spirit being in Genesis chapter one that created all things. Now, when we talk about that God created you just like himself, he didn't do that in the physical form, although the physical representation was the physical representation of the spiritual. It was the visible representation of the invisible, but he created you just like himself. And even before time began, think about the wonderful fellowship we had with the Father I mean, even transferring thoughts from mind to mind uh, because there's such a oneness. Guess where we're headed back to? We're headed back to the same one mind. And there's one God, one spirit, uh, uh, one mind. Uh, this whole process uh, that our bodies are shedding like a snake would shed a skin. Our bodies are shedding mortality so that we can take on immortality. The Apostle Paul probably had the best grasp on that uh, mm -hmm. other than God than anybody. Yeah, yeah. that is true. And, it, it, you know, we have taken God's eternal purpose and put it off in the future. Like in the future, God's eternal purpose is going to happen or it's going to be worked out one day yeah. in, in the sweet by and by and when I get my cabin in the corner of glory and all these different <laughs> kinds of <laughs> concepts that we have. Right. And so, but God's eternal purpose is not in the future. If anything, if God declares the end from the beginning and whatnot, well, God declares the future from the past. So, uh, yeah. you know, you, you yeah. named one of your shows after the a movie the other day uh, with, of eternity and beyond, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw this one out there. See, we're going back to the future because the future uh -huh. isn't right. We're going back to reality is what we're saying. See, that's what we're, we're not going uh, forward to something. We're going back to Genesis one. It, that is always been, and it's really not going back, but, but I'm just throwing that right. out there maybe to, to, to stir up some humor a little bit. But, uh, so now we can see in, in the book of Ephesians, maybe some of these things, because Paul talks a lot about the purpose of God in Ephesians and, and, uh, uh, in verse one and I mean, chapter one and eight, he said, which, uh, verse nine, having made known to us the mystery of his will, because we talked about his purpose and will, so he's talking about it again, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Yeah, See, God's yeah. purpose is in himself. And, and, and yeah. that's, that purpose is so established in himself, in his will, that, and, and guess what? See, we're in that and always have been in that purpose. Amen. And so if I've been in that purpose and you've been in that purpose and everybody watching yeah. has been in that purpose and will, well, what does that say about the whole of creation? It always has been. And he, yeah. and he, he had Moses or whoever write it down in Genesis 1 right there. So, so that uh, in this dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, which are both in the heaven and on earth. Again, we see that picture in him. We've also obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works yeah. all things according to the counsel of his will. <laughs> so yeah. awesome yeah. see he works Amen. all things after the uh, the counsel of his will it, and it always god has always been doing that there's never a time when god has not been working at all things according to his purpose and we're yes. just we're like waking up saying wow so this is the purpose and will of god and that's our awakening that's happening that's what we're awakening to we're awakening to his purpose and to his yeah. will to that which he has counseled and that which he has established you study the word established it's a great word to study and you see how god I mean, he, he's established all this then then man there's nothing that unestablished it. it it just is established and so therefore it is so as far as he's concerned and i'll go ahead and close my my ramblings here tonight uh, with uh with our opening scripture where it says, uh, uh, to, uh, to me, this is uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 2, or chapter 3, verses 8, it begins, To me, who am the least of the uh, saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. I, I love that statement, uh, the unsearchable yeah. riches of Christ, because it's not unsearchable to the Holy Spirit, to Holy Spirit. It's unsearchable to no. the natural man, but it is not unsearchable to Holy Spirit. That's why... It has to be through revelation that we come to, which he mentioned earlier in chapter three. And to make all see, which is the word of enlightenment, what is the fellowship of this mystery, 
which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the tent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities, powers, and the heavenlies, according to, see, everything is according to this eternal purpose, which he accomplished in right. Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I think that's so important that he accomplished this in Christ. And see, his uh, earth walk and his death, burial, and resurrection are an outflow of this eternal purpose, which he accomplished. See, he accomplished it yeah. and he established it. It's all in the heavens. It's a reality. But you know what? Man, Jesus came into our reality and accomplished the eternal purpose of God. In other yeah. words, we had man in God's image and likeness and had dominion. That is God's man. We see the manifestation of Genesis 1, 26, when Jesus is walking the shores of Galilee. That is the manifestation in our understanding, in our realm of God's eternal purpose. That is Christ manifested in everything that he was a manifestation of. So are we. So Amen. are we. We just have to awaken and what, what, what Paul says to grow up in him and all things. And there's different terminologies we can say of putting off the old and putting on the new and having the mind renewed and all these different things that help us get the more ways it's stated, the more ways we can see it and incorporate it into our understanding so that we can sit back as our father did at the beginning of creation and say, I am at rest. I am at peace. Amen. I know that my purpose is established. And you know what? God's purpose is established in us and is proved in us through the person and work of his son, Christ Jesus. And that's what we rest in. Amen. Amen. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is. Yes. Always, always been that way. I actually did have a show. I don't know, uh, back in uh, June um, with the picture of the DeLorean and it's called back to the beginning. <laughs> uh, yeah. There you go. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the perfect, Perfect movie picture there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, Pastor Rich, I, I know this will be far from the last time you're on the show with me, but I just, uh, I, I so enjoy spending time with you. Uh, people don't know this, but every now and then we even get to do this off camera. Yeah. I mean, on camera with each other, but off uh, the internet. And um, uh, I, I just, I have a real appreciation for your heart and appreciate what God's done and revealing to you. And appreciate that you are one of our professors at World Bible School University because that shows me and tells me the kind of stuff that our students are getting. Because no matter what topic you're teaching, uh, you're still able to interject the truth of the eternal Christ. And yeah, that's yeah. such such an important thing. Yeah, so so important. I mean, uh, the beginning and the end is Christ, and. Uh, you know, and so everything, the two, so that means truly everything in between is Christ as well. Christ is all in and all. And so uh, yeah. for me, I just preach Christ. You know, people say, what do you teach, Rich? What, what's your teaching? Is it uh, what kind of topic? You know what? I just preach Christ and him crucified and what that means to me, because that's the beginning of wisdom for me is to understand yes. Christ crucified. Just as Paul taught in his revelation, he, he takes us through those steps and, and he just unfolds that to teach us who we are. Yeah, because what that means to you and what that means to me may not be the same that it means to somebody else. But I have to have that place where I'm coming into the identity of his reality. And so if you want to be a realist, uh, be that in him. Right. Find what his reality is yeah. and then operate from that because we do know that we were created to have dominion. We do know that we were created to think like God, act like God, and speak like God. And to do that, you're going to have to transition some things in your thinking. Such a powerful broadcast of uh, the eternal purpose. Uh, again, Pastor Rich will post that book uh, link uh, for you after the show. Uh, if you would, you can grab your copy of Christ is All. And the subtitle is The Revelation of the Truth as it is in Christ. And I want to tell you something. The eternal Christ, I, I, I just can tell you from experiences that I've had, the eternal Christ has something to share with you. He has yeah, something so. to say to you. Yeah. And he will do that through the through his voice working with holy spirit because father son and holy spirit work in unison 
all he's trying to do is get you to work in unison with him. Right. And he has some wonderful things to share with you. It is the revelation of who he is in you as you function in this life. Amen. Yeah. I mean, Amen. for you, for you have died and your life is hid with Christ and God. See, in other words, your concept of you as a mortal material being Come no on. longer exists and your identity is with Christ in God. That's where we yeah. exist. And if we, if we exist yeah. there and if we can tap, if we can touch the hem of that garment. If we can see any of that as our reality, right. then we'll be transformed and changed into that image that we are beholding. Glory Amen. to God. Thank you so much, Dr. Bill, for having me on your show. It's, it's just been a great venue and a uh, coming out party for me to uh, get on live uh, internet yeah. uh, uh, show here. I like to admit I'm starting to come out of my shell a little bit. Uh, uh, nervous. I'm used to hiding when I'm on stage and doing things live back in the old days when I was a drummer, I had this big, huge drum set and I liked it because I could hide behind my drums, but it, right. God doesn't let you hide forever. So, you know, appreciate this opportunity and it's definitely to be able to teach at the university. That's just been a, a great thing. I don't know. I, I know some of the students are enjoying it, but it's been good for me. I tell you that I've been learning a lot, putting these lessons yeah. together and, and preparing and, and getting the things and, and making timelines and doing all that. So I appreciate that very much. Thank you so much, both to you and Dr. Fay, man. You guys are awesome. Amen. And, you know, it's uh, it's good. As ministers, we, we study. But when you come into a university level and you're responsible for sometimes, oftentimes, larger uh, a group of students than even in our congregations, right. it's like your, your, your sense of responsibility comes up a notch and you begin to dig into things and Holy Spirit takes you into stuff that you really wasn't sure where to go with it. And all of a sudden you've got this course developed that, Hey man, that's another book or that's good teaching material or, or something. And so we're so honored to have you, uh, and apostle Lynn and, uh, our other uh, uh, brothers and sisters out there that are teaching and working as paraprofessionals and all those things. Uh, I, I'll tell you what, it's like uh, the A-team, Hannibal Smith. Yeah. I love it when the plan comes together, and it's been yeah. God's plan. Because Dr. Fay and I really haven't known how to do that. Although there's the education there, putting it together is different. And she's a jewel. I'm so grateful for my wife. Yeah, so grateful for that. And the, the paraprofessionals. Anna is my paraprofessional. And there was no way I could have did this w without her help. It's just, it would have never happened. Yeah. I don't have the time, you know, I mean, my, of course I work and all those things. And so big right. days every day, but man, she has made it to where I can then focus on the lesson and, and she grades the work and does different things. And so the, the help there is invaluable. And I, and I appreciate that and thank that uh, gift in her so much and for her volunteering. That's, that's been wonderful. Amen. Hey, everybody, if you're interested in the next block of classes, I think coming up in January, uh, right before our graduation, our first graduation will happen, uh, you can contact Dr. Faye. Her email is drfay.wbsu at gmail.com. Uh, you can also contact her by Facebook. Um, uh, we'd love for you to... Uh, be able to learn more of the stuff we're talking about here tonight and on all of our shows. Uh, it's my heart and my passion. And I also share these broadcasts to our WBSU University, our WBS University uh, Facebook page also. So a lot of information can be grabbed there. Uh, thanks again, Pastor Rich. And for everybody watching tonight, oh my goodness, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to give you a reminder, but if you would or you haven't done so, so far, please click like, click like and then click share so that other people, your friends, family, uh, groups that you're a part of uh, can also watch this awesome program uh, this week and last week. And in the morning, uh, join me for Friday morning conversations with Apostle Lynn Garner. We are talking about the Ascension gifts next Thursday night. Uh, Dr. Kelly Fairchild is going to be with me, and um, we always get into some great discussions. She's a great teacher also, and I love these teaching gifts because I get to sit at the feet of teachers and I <laughs> to listen and brainstorm some stuff that wherever I'm going next. So thank you, Pastor Rich, again, thank and you. I know we'll be talking soon. God bless you, everyone. Appreciate it. 
All right, everybody. All right. Good night. Have a great uh, evening wherever you're at. Uh, if it's morning for you, have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. Blessings.